Good morning. Welcome on this beautiful spring day. My name is Karen Mills, and Gordon Ritchie and I will be your choir co-directors and service leaders this morning. And we hope that you feel welcome here. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, multi-generational religious community. We celebrate the rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritually questing individuals joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, including diversity of beliefs, from divine believers to humanists, from pagans to atheists to agnostics. We believe in the compassion of the human heart, the warmth of community, the pursuit of justice, and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather with gratitude this morning on Treaty 6 land, shared by many nations. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another and good stewards to our planet, good ancestors to our children. And we'll begin with some opening words. We gather here as individual people, young and old, male and female, temporarily abled and disabled, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and straight people, all the colors of the human race, theist, atheist, agnostic, Christian, Buddhist, feminist, humanist. We gather here as a community of people who are more than categories. We gather here, each ministering to the other, meeting one another's strengths, encouraging wholeness. We give thanks for this extraordinary blessing, the gathering together of separate, unique individuals as one whole, one body, our church. Here may our minds stretch, our hearts open, and our spirits deepen. Here may we acknowledge our brokenness and be ever stirred by love's infinite possibilities. Come, let us worship. I'd invite Marg Booker to be our chalice lighter this morning. And as she lights our chalice, I will read the the opening words. O light of life, be kindled again in our hearts as we meet together this morning to celebrate the joy of human community, seeking a wholeness that extends beyond ourselves. I'd invite the children to come forward and light their chalice too, please. And our youth. So I'd invite everyone to join, please, now in our first hymn, number 1008, When Our Heart is in a Holy Place.
I'd invite you to do a quick switch of hymnals, and we'll sing the children out to number 118, verse 1, This Little Light of Mine. You can stand or stay sitting as you choose. Some words by Beth Lefevre, we are whole. We are whole even in the broken places, even where it hurts. We are whole even in the broken places, the places where fear impedes our full engagement with life, where self-doubt corrupts our self-love, where shame makes our faces hot and our souls cold. We are whole even in those places where perfectionism blunts the joy of full immersion into person, place, activity, where good enough does not reside except in our silent longings, where our gaps must be fast filled with substance, accomplishment, or frenzied activity lest they gape open and disgust. We are whole where we would doubt our own goodness, richness, fullness, and depth, where we would doubt our own significance, our own profoundness. We are whole even in our fragility, even where we feel fragmented, alone, insubstantial, insufficient. We are whole even as we are in process, even as we stumble, even as we pick ourselves up again, for we are whole. We are whole. I invite you to join in the responsive reading that's printed in your order of service. We know that hurt moves through the world, perpetuated by action, inaction, and indifference. Our values call us to live in the reality of the heartbreak of our world, remembering that no one is outside the circle of love. We, who are Unitarian Universalists, not only affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person, We also affirm the inherent wholeness of every being, despite apparent brokenness. We know that things break or break down, promises, friendship, sobriety, hope, communication. This breaking happens because our human hearts and our very institutions are frail and imperfect. We make mistakes. Life is messy. No one is outside the circle of love. With compassion as our guide, we seek the well-being of all people. We seek to dismantle systems of oppression that undermine our collective humanity. We believe that we're here to guide one another toward love. No one is outside the circle of love. No matter how fractured we are or once were, we can make whole people of ourselves. We are whole at our core because of the great, unnameable, sometimes inconceivable love in which we live. No one is outside the circle of love. Please join in hymn number 1029, Love Knocks.
Our community is entirely self-governing and self-supporting. One of the privileges of our free church tradition is to provide all of the financial support for our many ministries from among ourselves. Generosity, therefore, is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and institutional well-being. In addition to supporting this church community, we also make a monthly com- uh, commitment beyond our walls. One half of the un- unidentified cash that is received is given to an outside organization, some local, some national, some international. For the month of April, we will be sharing our abundance with the UUUNO, I was looking forward to saying that, the Unitarian Universalist United Nations Office. As the offering is received, we'll have another song from Coriolis. Offering responses in your order of service. We thank you for your generosity and your support in our times, our talents, and our monies. We support the work of this community and the Unitarian Universalist tradition. The following text is by Carolyn Joy Page. We were like interlocking pieces in a jigsaw puzzle of life, writes Kate McGarrigal. This lesson is one of the most important of my teachings. 
students who work with this teaching benefit because they find a deep understanding of what, is, what true fulfillment means and are greatly empowered by consciously working towards their wholeness. Here are three questions to ask yourself. How much of you is missing in your life? Does it feel like you are fully present, powerful, and whole? Does your life feel fulfilling, or do you feel like something is missing? Loss, pain, stress, life's hardships can result in you feeling like a piece of yourself has been carved out, leaving a gaping hole of emptiness behind. We all know what it feels like to feel empty, to feel like we have less of ourselves present in our lives. Some people live with this feeling for a few days, some for years. Imagine that we begin as a perfect circle. That circle is wholeness, complete in every way. We come to experience physical living in order to gain wisdom and to learn to be whole while in the context of physical life. We soon feel pain, powerlessness, and loss in some form. Our bodies are afraid of pain, so we cut out the parts of ourselves that we believe the pain comes from. The parts of ourselves that we associate pain with become like the indentations of a jigsaw piece indents holding raw, open wounds that we would rather keep from the world and hide. We hide these wounds with masks. The masks are the projections of the jigsaw, the parts of ourselves that we believe we keep, uh, will keep us emotionally and physically safe in a world, safe from pain. For example, in childhood... If you associated pain with uh, associated uh, your pain with loss, with a part of your cell that knew of showing affection, you may have actually cut that part of yourself out to avoid further pain. You did what you had to do. Know that you did the best you could with the tools you had. We all do. The mask and indents served you but now you may feel that they no longer serve you. You ache for a new you, a truer you, a you that is whole. This is your birthright and your destiny. Wholeness is never lost. It is only hidden, waiting to be reclaimed. All the paths of healing, all the paths of enlightenment, all the paths of personal growth have one goal, wholeness. Wholeness is the full presence of you in your life and relationships. It is feeling empowered and free to be yourself, your true self, without holding back or exaggerating other parts for effect. Your circle self becomes like a jigsaw with indentations and projections. The indentations represent the lacks that we feel in us. For example, a lack of worth, love, approval, joy, peace, control, beauty, freedom, respect, purpose, security. They all represent, they also represent every time we feel less than others in any way. The projections represent the part of us that we decide, usually unconsciously, We keep the pain from happening again. This is the mask we create to hide our indents and project into a world what we believe will keep us pain-free. A person will usually project the opposite of what they feel the pain about. The projections also represent every time we feel better than others in any way. The indent is a minus a withdrawal, less, lack of, and the projection is a plus, exaggerated, shown bigger than. 
We see this all the time without recognizing it for what it is. Let's meet Jack. Jack projects his lack of confidence with a projection of arrogance. In order to fill the emptiness he feels inside, he seeks externals to make him feel confident. He seeks other jigsaws to fill his holes. But even when he feels a perfect fit through a relationship, activity, or a thing, they may only serve to keep his mask intact and his holes as deep as they were to start with. His other choice as an adult is to use the opportunity as a lack of fulfillment and gifts and relationship to begin taking responsibility for his holes and to seek wholeness from within. The externals will never do what he hopes they will do. They will never replace authentic wholeness. Now, holes are not bad or wrong. Neither are, is wholeness right or wrong. Wholeness is what we strive for as incarnating souls. However, we desire to experience holes from our growing wisdom and learning. Once we have learned, we start to remember that there is another way to feel complete while still in the physical world. And then we begin our journey home, back to the authentic self, to the perfect circle that we are as soul. So how do you know when you are dealing with a jigsaw plus or minus fit? If you judge a quality in another and feel emotionally reactive towards that, you believe the lack... Oh, sorry. If you judge a quality in another and feel emotionally reactive towards that, you believe the lack... You believe they lack or have the excess of... You lack... Oh, goodness sakes, give me a moment here. <laughs> this, is very, this is very complex information here. Okay, I'm going to try this slowly so we all understand it, including myself. If you judge a quality in another, okay, and feel emotionally reactive towards what you believe they lack or have the excess of, right, your own lack of excess or being, you're being triggered within you, in that moment, you can ask yourself, what quality is that person being plus or minus for that I have an un unhealed opposite in me? Remember that the plus and minus represents the unbalanced extreme. So an aggressive person is not upsetting because we need to be aggressive. What would the healthy, balanced expression of aggression be? the wholeness in you would not be aggression. It would be confidence. We judge from wholes. We discern from wholeness. I love that phrase. We judge from wholes. We discern from wholeness. Holes bring pain, discord, and dependency. Wholeness brings healing, peace, and independence. Ironically, wholes create the illusion of separation, and wholeness creates truth of unity. Here are some ways to work on your wholeness. Bring what you find to your inner life, and then take this learning and healing into your outer life a step at a time. Identify the lacks you feel inside yourself. Identify the fears that lie at the core of the lacks and the beliefs that keep you there. Identify what of your lacks result in treating, in reacting to the equal opposite quality in others. Learn to express the parts of yourself that are hidden behind a mask in a balanced way. Add a little plus to every minus of yours and a little minus to every plus. 
Identify what you wish others would be for you and be that for yourself. I see some nodding. Face the fears and beliefs within your holes that you know no longer serve you and replace them with beliefs that serve your wholeness. Find ways to give yourself what you seek from others emotionally. Practice feeling and knowing that you are worthy and whole. Get to know yourself, your fears and pain, and imagine that the whole circle you would say, think, feel, and act. Let the whole you be and grow in you. Feel it there and give it expression. Remember that others are also feeling the pain of living with holes. Understand that they are also operating in the best way that they know. They also have fears and unhealed pains, but it's not your soul's job to fill their holes, just as it's not their job to fill yours. Your jigsaw self may be afraid of your whole self because it does not want to face the holes or give up what it gets from other jigsaws. Be loving and gentle, but firm with yourself about waking the holes you have in your life. The hole you existed before you were born, it exists now and it will exist forevermore. You are already all that you would be. Now it is up to you to be it. May it be so. Blessed be. Let us actually remain seated for our next hymn. Number 1003, found in your little teal book. 1007, there is a river flowing. Each week we take time to recognize the joys and sorrows that touch our lives. It is a ritual practiced by many Unitarian Universalist communities. We like candles to mark the significant moments and events in our lives. I invite anyone who wishes to do so to come forward, light a silent candle for what is ever in their heart and in their minds today.
may we carry the joys, concerns, and moments presented in these tiny lights in our hearts. They express very deeply that we are not alone. We'd like to invite John and Lynn for our next reading. Even This is Enough by Vanessa Southern. So much undone, so much to do, so much to heal in us and the world, so much to acquire. A meal. A healthy body. A fit one. A lover. A job. A better job. Proof we have and are enough. Just around the corner of now. And up against it, the reality of all that falls short and the limits of today. We We honor honor the the limits. If your body won't do what it used to, for right now, let it be enough. If your mind won't stop racing or can't think of the word, let it be enough. If you are here, utterly alone and in despair, be all that here with us. If today you cannot sing because your throat hurts or you don't have the heart for music, be silent. The world won't stop spinning on her axis if you don't rise to all occasions today. Love won't cease to flow in your direction. Your heart won't stop beating. All hope won't be lost. You are part of the plan for this world's salvation. Of that, we have no doubt. The world needs its oceans of people striving to be good to carry us to the shores of hope and wash fear from the beachheads and cleanse all wounds so they can heal. But oceans are big, and we are sure there are parts that don't feel up to the task of the whole some days. Rest if you must, then, like the swimmer lying on her back who floats, or the hawk carried on cushions of air. Rest in pews made to hold weary lives in space carved out for the doing of nothing much but being. Perhaps then you will feel in your bones, in your weary heart, the aching healing sense that this is enough, even this, that That we we are are enough, enough. you You are are enough. enough. Enough.
It is our work shared with each other in covenant that creates and sustains this beloved community. We extinguish this chalice, but its light lives on in the directions we have chosen today. The light of this faith lives on in us, together in our hearts, minds, bodies, and spirits. Amen, and blessed be. So we have, this is, this is I love, I love when, when moments come together. Karen was actually approached by Lynn Wolfe and gave a request. She asked that we sing hymn number six, just as long as I have breath. From what I understand, there were no hymns at Ed's memorial service. But whenever Lynn thinks of Ed, she thinks of this hymn. And so I was reading through the text. I thought, this so fits in to our thought for this morning. So let us celebrate life as we join together and sing Hymn number six. Let's join in our responsive reading, number 611, found in the back of your hymn book. Words that come to us from Sanskrit. I'll read the regular font and ask you to read the italicized text of 611. I am the self that dwells in the heart of every mortal creature. I am the beginning, the lifespan, and the end of all. I am a death that snatches all. I also am the source of all that shall be born. I am the time without end. I am the sustainer. My face is everywhere. I am the beginning, the middle, and the end in creation. I am the knowledge of things spiritual. I am the divine seed of all lives. In this world, nothing animate or inanimate exists without me. I am the strength of the strong. I am the purity of the good. And I love this part. I am the knowledge of the knower. There is no limit to my divine manifestations. Whatever in this world is powerful, beautiful, or glorious, it is our work shared with each other in covenant that creates and sustains this beloved community. We extinguish this chalice, but its light lives on in the directions we have chosen today. The light of this faith lives on in us together in our hearts, minds, bodies, 
and spirits. Amen, and blessed be. Please be seated for our postlude. So now let's join hands, as you are willing and able. So let's just take a moment. I give you these words by Erica A. Hewitt. The hand in yours belongs to a person whose heart is sometimes tender, whose skin is sometimes thin, whose eyes sometimes filled with tears, and whose laughter is a beautiful sound. The hand that you hold belongs to a person who is seeking wholeness and trusts that you are doing the same, that we all are doing the same. As you leave this sanctuary, may your hearts remain open. May your voices stay strong. May your hands remain outstretched. Let us join us in and carry the flame.